this or not. And if it doesn't, he has to go to the market and replace it with the market tonnage. But then again, when you have the market tonnage, there has to be, uh, there has to be uh, uh, deployed within those, those uh, 10 specific days. You can only do it reasonably close to the latest. And by doing so, the owner is going to expose himself to the market fluctuations. So if I'm booking a cargo with you today, in my calculation, I'm factoring roughly what my time charter cost is going to be. Say today, May 27, May 28, 29, I'm booking a cargo to carry wheat from Vancouver to Manila mid-July, you give me ladies uh, July 15, 25. The market right now, let's say, is fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars for a for a for a handy max. Now, notwithstanding the, uh, the the forecast for the summer that Mark mentioned, if it so happens, if it so happens that the market is going to be firmer, say early July at the time when you have to take the vessel, you're going to be losing money. So, when you can see whether you can work out with your supplier a wide laken, because the wider laken you give to an owner the smaller risk he's going to be exposed to. And hence, it can be factored in the freight rate and you can enjoy the savings. The size flexibility, even when possible, give the owner the size flexibility because then again, this is going to increase the pool of the tonnage that he can grow upon. If you give him just one size, the, t the pool of tonnage available to him is smaller. If you give him larger, obviously less risk. Last but not least, whenever possible, if it is not risk prohibitive, and again, when the cargo is booked on a TBN basis, if an owner has an opportunity to fix in an older ship, that could give him a price advantage that can be translated into savings in your freight. Now, the late time considerations, I'm not going to discuss those because Mark gave you an excellent overview of that yesterday, so I guess we can, we can pass on that. So what are the conclusions of our discussions? Well, number one, appreciate the nature of shipping economics and its impact on the forecast. Number two, as we discussed, appreciate the difference between pricing in a very short term, intermediate term, and long term, because the pricing basis is going to be very different. Consider shipping economics and, it's, and, and their impact on volatility. Pay attention to utilization. I mean, you can take a view of your own, whether you believe, for example, based on the forecast uh, given by ISL yesterday, I mean, if you take a view uh, that we're going to be flooded with new ships and essentially market will remain in a state of oversupply, the utilization is going to decrease. If utilization decreases, the volatility may decrease. So to what extent this could affect your risk-related uh, risk decisions? But on the other hand, also appreciate what Mark mentioned yesterday about the sentiment. And the rules of engagement change dramatically from 2003. Until 2003, owners had certain biases as to what is possible what is not possible. I mean, what happened over the last five years essentially gave owners a feeling the sky is the limit. Now, obviously, it was a very humbling experience in October and November last year because we went back to the basics. Obviously, in 2006, if 2007, if I made a bet with anyone <laughs> that the market for a cape could go down to $1,500, that would be even laughable, would not be adequate to describe the reaction. The other thing that you have to pay attention to is how our various voyage-related freight component affecting your business depending on the, uh, uh, sorry, I lost it. <laughs> Appreciated low market means other voyage-related costs deserves more attention, right? As we discussed, low market, pay attention to port costs, pay attention to bunker costs. High market, pay attention to what happens to time charter. Then, in order to figure out your 
fair, you know, I mean, the, 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 the voyage rate that fairly, re uh, fairly reflects uh, the market, identify the TC component. See, I'm stumbling, you have to forgive me. So identify the TC component of your freight to see if you get a fair rate, and then you use the TC equivalent for more productive negotiations, as we just discussed. And last but not least, for optimal freight, identify voyage models for whom the structure of your deals facilitates convergence with owner's objectives. And then, at the end, I'd like to leave you with an inspirational quote. If you have to forecast, forecast often. And with that, I thank you so much for your attention. And if you have any questions, like I said, I am available here until Sunday. You can always send me an email, and I'll be very happy and honored to, to comment. Thank you.